so coming toward the mcq number 81 a person is naked with 80 percent of humidity the mode of loss of heat from his body is by now this is both radiation and conduction humidity means what humidity means the air is having droplet air the air is having water it indirectly gave you a clue that there is no wind if there is wind if there is a f what is mean by wind flowing air if there is a flowing air or wind what happens it takes these water molecules with it so if it takes these water molecules with it what happens if a person is having sweating there is evaporation there is evaporation when there is evaporation there will be decrease in temperature so the heat lost by that is called convection so they are giving you a clue if there is a humidity it means there is no wind if there is no wind it means there is no transmission by air if there is no transmission by air it means there is no convection so you have excluded convection <clears throat> now you are left with radiation and conduction if a person is naked now <clears throat> he is actually radiating the heat mode of transmission is mainly by radiation but it include all of the three radiation conduction and convection if a person is naked what is the mode of transmission all of the above radiation conduction convection but if that is not an option then the main answer is radiation 60 percent is lost now i am giving you the clue this is picture from the guyton the person is lying naked mode of transmission is one is the radiation other is conduction to the air air currents convection conduction to the objects evaporation so all of the above but the main thing is you can focus on radiation 60 percent 60 percent the second most important thing is evaporation evaporation and the third more, most important thing is the air currents convection in this mcq they are talking about the humidity if there is humidity it means there is no air there is no uh, wind wind is a flowing air if there is no wind so it means the evaporation is out the sweat will not evaporate number two they have not talked about the uh, the wind and they have not talking about the sweating if there is humidity anyway even if there is sweating the sweat cannot evaporate that is the main problem the sweat cannot evaporate and if the sweat is cannot evaporate what will happen the body heat will not go down how the sweating decreases the body heat by evaporation by perspiration if there is humidity the sweat cannot evaporate so what happens there is there is no decrease in the body temperature so if a person is naked and lie, lying in contact with the object the mode of transmission mainly is radiation and conduction both radiation and conduction both over here radiation and conduction both conduction it, it is actually conduction to the air 15 percent a person is lying naked and humidity is 80 percent you have excluded the evaporation and you have excluded the air currents because there is no evaporation and there is no air currents these two are excluded now you are left with radiation and conduction conduction to the air now i am giving you another clue conduction to the air is possible there is another statement that says here it is in a nude person seated in a comfortable position focus on this paragraph in a nude person seated in a comfortable position without grass air movement means there is no grass air movement about 15 percent of his or her total heat loss occurs by conduction to the air so it means person is nude lying uh, sitting in a chair radiation and conduction both conduction to the air is still possible so radiation and conduction both in even in, in the absence of air currents conduction to the air is possible so by both i think i am clear on this so the answer of this is conduction and rad, uh, radiation both which are the following cause in increase in interstitial pressure that is uh, increased capillary permeability option a not b the increased collide osmotic pressure where in the plasma or uh, in the interstitium 
if it is in the plasma then it will decrease the interstitial pressure if it is in the uh, interstitium then it will increase but the, here it is not clear increase at boom in where in the vessel or interstitium so a is right option this is jaundice in a pregnant and diagnosed by ggt they are talking actually about obstructive jaundice because alkaline phosphatase is already produced by placenta so that is not the right option so the uh, ggt gamma glutarial transferase is the right option motor supply of sternocleidomastoid this is accessory narrow this is accessory narrow that is accessory narrow coming toward this the overdose decrease of which drug can be decreased by alkalinization of urine to increase its, its excretion now let's suppose this is the proximal tubule this is loop of henle and this is the distal canal and this is the glomerulus so what happen if the drug is coming like that this is reabsorbed normally but if you make this thing what if you change the ph of the medium of this interstitium it cannot be reabsorbed so alkalinization of urine what happen it decreases the absorption of their drug if you alkalinize the urine it decreases the absorption why because this that substance become charged and the charged particle cannot be absorbed through through uh nephron so the most common drug is aspirin aspirin so you give sodium bicarbonate in the aspirin toxicity or overdose so as to increase the excretion you actually alkalinize the urine to decrease the absorption in the kidney and increase its excretion the second most common drug is phenobarbitone so over here the answer is phenobarbitone so if you alkalinize urine in phenobarbitone toxicity or overdose you are excreting the drug fast pen fiber are the adult fiber c fiber are the slow slope fiber fiber displays are already discussed posterior maxillary person lying supine chest pain increase due to pericardium pericarditis already discussed first heart sound is related to option b isovolumetric contraction now you have to memorize that chart i given in my video cardiac cycle part first second and third if you memorize that chart you will not inshallah forget first heart sound second heart sound third heart sound fourth heart sound their correlation with the jvp waves i have made that video uh, s1 ankle jerk class already discussed in the previous lecture person naked room temperature is 21 humidity present loss of heat is by conduction and radiation humidity is present so sweating is not possible sweating is not possible perspiration is not possible convection is not possible because convection decreases humidity so we are left with conduction and radiation now if the room temperature is above the body temperature the body will gain heat or lose heat suppose the body temperature is 37 the room temperature is 45 what will happen body will gain heat body will gain heat but the body will activate certain mechanism to get rid of heat by sweating by decrease production of heat inside the body by sweating sweating increase cutaneous vasodilation to to take more blood to the to the to the skin to get rid of that type of necrosis is brain that is also always liquefactive necrosis coagulative necrosis is seen in all other organs in which there is ischemia liquefactive necrosis is due to release of enzyme from the lysosome the medial quadrant of breast are supplied by they are talking about the lim lymphatic drainage so the upper the uh, lateral quadrant is drained into the interior pectoral or the interior axillary lymph node i discussed previously with reference this seems to give it is internal mammary lymph nodes so the intrathoracic node the right option coming toward the next labia majora lymphatic supply this is superior group of lymph nodes now the labia majora the lymphatic system of this is very important the labia majora 
it drains into superficial inguinal lymph nodes from the superficial inguinal lymph node they drain into the deep inguinal lymph nodes from the deep inguinal lymph nodes they drain into the abdominal lymph nodes actually the periotic lymph nodes and from that they goes into the chest and then they return into the venous system now the superficial inguinal lymph nodes are divided into into two main groups superior and inferior the superior is again divided into two groups the lateral and the medial now this is the medial lymph nodes that receive lymphatics from the labia majora well i i cannot go into the further details i will explain with each mcq that are coming toward but it is medial superior group of lymph node you have to remember the complete concept superior and inferior lymph node the superior divided into medial and lateral so it is the medial and superior lymph node that receive the labia majora and then drain into the deep inguinal lymph nodes the lymphatic drainage of the testes goes to periotic lymph node directly lymphatic drainage of ovaries goes to periotic lymph node and then goes upward to the abdomen uh, to other abdominal lymph node and then to the to the chest severely dehydrated patient 5% extrose is the right answer because if a person is severely dehydrated it means his extracellular flu compartment fluid is decreased as well as intracellular fluid compartment is decreased and out of the given option <coughs> which fluid increases the intracellular fluid compartment mainly that is 5% extrose because this is initially isotonic but the glucose is metabolized by the cell so it become hypotonic so the water goes into the cell why you can't give free water to the person because of hemolysis that will go into the rbc now this is actually the great cardiac mean <coughs> great cardiac mean because it drains most of the portion of the heart and there is a greater chance of injury to the great cardiac mean now the great cardiac mean drains which which uh, artery mainly that is anterior interventricular artery it drains the tributaries of anterior interventricular artery the middle cardiac vein drains the posterior interventricular artery and there is another mcq that is <coughs> anterior cardiac vein which of the following vein drain directly into the right atrium of the heart that is anterior cardiac vein anterior cardiac vein the great cardiac vein <coughs> and the middle cardiac vein they combine together to form coronary sinus and then they drain into the right atrium we you have to remember to to keep in mind the diagrammatical representation so that you remember for a longer period of time because if you just totalize it without uh, keeping in mind the picture you will forget it so i right now i have in my mind that picture the great cardiac vein moves like this then the middle cardiac vein then the small cardiac vein and the anterior but you have to memorize one mcq with this that is all the following goes into the coronary sinus except anterior cardiac vein all the following goes into the coronary sinus and then into the right atrium but one goes directly into the <coughs> right atrium that is anterior cardiac vein drug action won't be affected if bound to alpha glycoprotein alpha glycoprotein is like albumin alpha glycoprotein is like albumin uh these are the, the 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 drug carriers but the concentration of alpha glycoprotein in the in the blood is very less albumin binds to acidic drug a for a a for a albumin acidic the <clears throat> the alpha glycoprotein the alpha glycoproteins they binds the basic drug actually it also has a so i don't know you have to look for the clue but the albumin binds the acidic drug the alpha bind the alpha glycoprotein bind the basic drug this is another mcq over here the right answer is the the the, the trauma the right answer is the trauma because alpha glycoprotein is inflammatory marker so any inflammation will increase the alpha glycoprotein in neoplasm there is inflammation there is increase 
inflammatory marker just like uh, anemia of chronic disease there is increase in hepcidin there is increase in other inflammatory markers similarly there is an increase in alpha glycoprotein so it will affect drug action in hepatic disease there is decreased production of alpha glycoprotein so it will decrease drug action decrease drug action or increase drug action increase drug action because you are having less protein to bind the drug so the free, free component of the drug is increased and the active portion is the free drug infection there is also inflammation so the protein goes up in mi it also increases so but in trauma that is usually not affected or that is least affected genital tubercle form clitoris in female penis in male well i will make another video on 3 to 4 left over mcq inshallah and uh, i'm trying my best to deliver uh, the best of uh, these uh, options uh, if there is uh, any error you think you can uh, give your suggestion in comment section below so i will resume uh, in the next lecture from here thank you for watching